So call for 2011 summer question three. Um, the thing to watch out for, this bit's fine, this bit is all right. We've got x cubed, x squared, x, and the number two. So that bit's fine. So we can set up our long division there. The thing that's going to try and catch us out with this is that when we come to what we're dividing by, it's x squared, but there's no x term in the middle. Now, as we start, that may not look like it's a problem, but the next thing that we do, we're going to have to be careful with this. So remember that the thought process that we go through, we say, what do you multiply x squared by to get 3x cubed? The answer must be 3x. So we put 3x, and I don't know exactly where you put it, we put it up there somewhere. We then do that bit of multiplication. Now, if it helps you to work this through, do a little bit of working out on the side. So this is 3x times x squared plus 3, which is 3x cubed plus 9x. And this is, this is the key thing. Look, there's no x squared term here. So when we come to write it, we're going to be really careful. We're not going to write 3x cubed plus 9x. Because if we write that, then when we come to do our subtraction next, it's not going to work. What we're going to write instead is 3x cubed plus 0x squared plus 9x. And that's the bit that we're going to take away. You'd actually, I think, if you were switched on as you were doing this, you would soon notice if you'd got your x under there, because it, it wouldn't exactly match up. But it, it is easy to make a mistake. The x cubed will disappear. We've got a minus 1 take away 0x squared, so we've still got minus x squared there. And we've got 10x take away 9x, which gives us 1x. And now we bring down the minus 3 to sit next to it. And we say, what do we multiply x squared to get minus x squared? So the answer is minus 1. And if we do that multiplication, I, I don't know, I'll work it out over here. Minus, <coughs> do need to do this today. We get that, and again, we're careful to line up our columns. We've got, um, what we've got minus x squared, we've got zero x's, and we've got minus three there. And you see, you see the little trap they set for you in this question was that it would be very easy to think the remainder here was zero, wouldn't it? To, to put down my mistake that the remainder was zero when it was supposed to be x, and you get confused about what you've done. But you notice that although the x squared and the number terms disappear, we've got x minus x. So we've ended up with a uh, wrong answer. It's x right? minus not x. Oh, it's x minus not x, of course it is. So we ended up with x, and that's how we made it. Okay, um, the question did want us to write down the quotient and show that the remainder is x. The, the examiner will get it from what we've done there, but it might be neat to actually write, therefore the quotient is 3x minus 1, and the remainder is x. Okay, now, although we've, we've not really, in, in working through the topics on this, we've not really got to the next part yet. And we will do the next part because it, it tells us something about how we use the sensor for other things. So the next part asks us to integrate that, that expression, to integrate between one, uh, 0 and 1, 3x cubed minus x squared plus 10x minus 3 over x squared plus 3 dx. And so the point here is can we use what we've just done to make this easier, um, we've just said that this here gives us, this division sum, gives us a quotient of 3x minus 1 and a remainder of x. So remember how we, how we would write that? That means we've got, well if you do, if you do, let's say um, 28 divided by 6, but if you do the calculation of 28 divided by 6, you end up with a quotient, a whole bit 
a 4, so 4 6 is a 24, and you've got a remainder of 4. So that remainder, that remainder actually means plus 4 sixths, doesn't it? That's what you get, that's, that's 6 is into 28 and 4 and 2 thirds. So when we write this, what we've got is a quotient, the whole bit of 3x minus 1, plus a remainder of x, but the remainder is x over x squared plus 3 dx. And that is the integral that we're now trying to do. And the first part of it is fine, isn't it? If we integrate 3x minus 1, what do we get? 3x squared over 2 minus x. 3x squared over 2 minus x. Good. <coughs> now this bit here, we're going to talk about integration a little bit later, but this is a particular type of integral. <coughs> it's the one where the top is almost the derivative of the bottom. The top is related to the derivative of the bottom. If we had a 2 there, in front of that x, then the top would be the derivative of the bottom. Of course, if we had a 2 there, then we'd have twice as much of this. <coughs> so, so it must actually be a half of <coughs> the natural log of x squared plus 3. When we write the natural log there, when we, when we use the natural log as our answer to our integral, we should put the modular sign in it, shouldn't we? But in this case, that's fairly irrelevant because x squared has to be positive anyway, so the modular sign would be redundant. If we put the numbers in, we would have, what, 3 over 2 minus 1 plus a half of the natural log of 4. And when taking away, well, the first bit's a 0. So we end up with half of the natural log of 3. And I think we've ended up with half 2 over 2 minus 1. And then it's OK, can we see where this would go? We've got half out of 4 minus a half out of 3. So we've got a half the natural log 4 thirds. And they wanted an exact answer. And, and there is an exact answer. There we go. All right. Um, this is really important as well. The question said, you remember the question said, hence find the exact value of that. So if you throw that at your calculator and it gives you a decimal answer, then you're not going to get credit for it. And that thing, you know, a lot of you have got the, the one the way it will do the, the definite integrals for you. The FX991, yes. <laughs> But you've got a risk here, haven't you? Because if you do that, you, you won't get an exam. <laughs>